Every so often in the nerf hobby, there is a standout blaster that brings the hobby forward. You have blasters such as the nerf long shot, which became the favorite platform for high feet per second springers. You have the nerf rapid strike, which helped bring modified flywheelers to the forefront and showed that rate of fire and suppressing fire could help win nerf battles. And more recently, you have blasters such as the Adventure Force Nexus Pro offering 150 foot per second super stock performance right out of the box for only 60 Canadian dollars. But what if I told you there was a new kid on the block? One that is a complete rookie at nerf but has a wealth of experience in the paintball world. One that can offer the velocity of a modified springer but with a rate of fire of a modified flywheeler. Say hello to the Milsig M79A2. Say hello to my little friend. My name is Nobility and this is the Milsig M79A2. You saw that clip correctly. The M79A2 was not firing correctly. I had the trigger pulled down in full auto mode and it was only firing up to a few bursts at a time. Now before I get into any more detail, let's do a quick overview of the M79A2. The Milsig M79A2 is the first foam dart blaster from Milsig a company better known for paintball than for nerf. They specialize in Milsim style paintball markers and gear. Utilizing their experience in paintball, they use a paintball engine known as the Heat Core and adapted it to fire half length foam darts, resulting in the M79A2, the world's first pre built HPA foam dart blaster. The M79A2 doesn't use traditional foam blaster technology, such as springs or batteries and flywheels. Rather, it uses high pressure air to propel darts. It uses a standard paintball HPA tank in which highly compressed air goes from an 800 PSI regulator on the tank itself into a second stage regulator on the heat core to lower the pressure from 800 PSI to a smaller amount, which propels the bolt forward to fire a dart out of the barrel. Basically, it uses the extreme energy density of HPA to make darts go very fast. The M79A2 starts at 450 United States dollars, but that's only for the blaster itself. In order to actually use this blaster, you will need at minimum a standard 800 PSI HPA tank, a remote line if you don't want the bottle on stock setup, or a CO2 stock. You can even screw the HPA tank directly into the air source adapter. Milsig sent me a 13-3000 HPA tank, but it was not certified for use in Canada, so I had to purchase a certified HPA tank. The one I purchased is 68 CI and 4500 PSI, which is good for around up to a thousand full power shots, but it cost me about 300 Canadian dollars. Additionally, one of the biggest drawbacks of HPA is that you will also have to fill your tank as well. Typically, this is inexpensive, as my local paintball shop charges $5 Canadian per fill, but it's a cost worth noting. This is a very high cost of entry to fling foam, so only those interested in having top tier blasters will likely be looking at the M79A2. I don't see this blaster being commonly used. However, Milsig promises a lot of performance from this blaster, so we will see if this cost is justified. Does this look too Milsim for you? Well, don't worry, because Milsig's got that covered. Shorter barrel, shorter handguard. Looks great. Oh, you don't want the stock on it either? Well, let's fix that too. Now it looks more like a paintball marker or an SMG style type of blaster rather than a full-on Milsim AR. And to be honest, I really like this look a lot. I find that it's very maneuverable, very compact, very lightweight and also still hits very hard. As you can see here in this configuration, it's even a little bit smaller than the Lynx. Milsim-ish looks aside, this blaster has a lot to love about it. This is a blaster that has full auto, 
that can fire up to 12 or 13 rounds per second. Something that combines the velocity of a high powered Springer but with the rate of fire of a modified flywheeler, I truly wholeheartedly thought that this could be the one blaster that successfully marries both of those traits. So let's head on over to Foam Fighters in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada to see what I was able to do with this blaster. Straight talons, 15 rounds each magazine. That was in safety. Let's try this again. So I unjammed the thing, I uh, released the safety lock, and I can now switch all the way. Again. Three FPS, guys. Wow. Let's put in semi auto. I don't know why I double shot there in semi auto mode. Right. I was in semi auto mode. That is in semi-auto mode. <laughs> this is full auto. This is semi-auto. Came 
Feels like I have a bolt action right Shotgun. Full auto and semi-auto. Double shot. A different talon mag here. Okay. Let's try it on full auto this time. Why? <sighs> Unfortunately, I am extremely disappointed in the Milsig M79A2. This blaster is capable of so much, yet it misses the mark in the most frustrating way possible. It doesn't work. Because my M79A2 does not work, unfortunately, I'm unable to complete a proper documented test of the performance and accuracy of my M79A2. My Canadian self would like to say, sorry. I really, truly, absolutely want to love this blaster. Not like, love it, I love this thing. Well, if it worked. It has a functional ergonomic profile. It's made out of durable aluminum and nylon. It has the potential to hit performance figures in excess of 350 feet per second. And it's extremely fun to use when it works. It feels like I get about one trouble-free full auto mag dump for every 30 or so errors, which is absolutely unacceptable. Reliability is the number one basic function of any blaster, and especially for 450 US dollars, this blaster should work trouble-free. This is absolutely unacceptable for any blaster, let alone the very first pre-built HPA blaster that would supposedly take HPA to the masses in our Nerf community. I've had the M79A2 for well over a month now and I have been in discussions with Milsig to try and fix this blaster. And as you saw from the firing footage, the very first time I was able to fire this blaster, it jammed. Note that this is the M79A2 version, which supposedly has some upgrades over the standard M79, which some other Nerf tubers have had, that was even more unreliable than this one. Some of the changes the A2 version has over the standard M79 in order to increase reliability is an updated bolt spring, updated trigger module spring, and different internal bolt pressure. Some of the fixes that Milsig has instructed me to do was to open up this blaster, to lube the O-rings, clean the bolt, and to change the bolt spring. But none of those fixes have done much to improve the reliability of my M79A2. In fact, Milsig sent me a heavier bolt spring, which all but makes full auto completely useless. It does not want to fire it in full auto. I really hope that for all the people that have pre-ordered an M79A2, that yours works. Just a word of caution, if you do have to open up your blaster, your warranty is supposedly void. So please make sure you speak to your distributor on fixing any kinds of errors, hoping that it won't void your warranty. The bottom line is you should not have to open up any blaster in order to get it to work, especially one that costs 450 United, United States, States dollars. dollars. I think that this missed opportunity with the M79A2 is a perfect opportunity for Milsig to go back to the drawing board and come up with an A3 version, one that simply works. In fact, it's also a great opportunity for other paintball or airsoft manufacturers that are maybe thinking of entering the Nerf hobby to look at what Milsig has done, the good and the not so good, 
and to improve on that. I would definitely love to see more HPA blasters in our hobby as I truly believe that HPA deserves a place in our hobby and has the capability of delivering the highest performing blasters. The Milsig M79A2 has so much going for it. It has the construction, it has the ergonomics, and it has the velocity. It even has the honor of being the very first pre-built HPA foam dart blaster. All Milsig needs to do is to simply make it work. Until next time, my name is Nobility and thanks for watching.